In today's lesson, we will be comparing and ordering both rational and irrational numbers. So, we have spent a few lessons learning about rational numbers in different forms. And uh, we started learning about some irrational numbers. And we're going to put all of them together and we're going to compare them and order them least to greatest. Alright, so starting out, um, here I have six different square roots. Um, none of them are perfect squares. As you can see um, up here, I have my perfect squares listed. And none of my square roots are perfect squares. And I'm going to, without a calculator, estimate uh, the value of all of these square roots. And I'm going to use the idea, we're going to be estimating them uh, in between consecutive integers. So under each square root, I have just kind of a mini number line so that we can place them on a num number line and get an idea of where they would fall. All right, so I'm going to look at my square roots and think about where they fall on my list of perfect squares. So square root of 12, where does 12 fall? 12 falls in between 9 and 16, but we're looking at square roots. So the square root of 12 must fall in between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. So if you think on a number line, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4. So I have 3 and I have 4, and the square root of 12 is going to fall in between 3 and 4. In other words, the square root of 12, if you were to evaluate it, is going to be 3 point and then a decimal. Alright, let's look at the next one. Square root of 41. Uh, let's figure out 41 falls in between 36 and 49. But if we think about square roots, the square root of 41 is going to fall in between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, which is 6 and 7. So on a number line, in between 6 and 7 lies the square root of 41. If you were to evaluate it, you would get 6 point a decimal. Um, but all we're doing is we're just estimating Remember, what two consecutive integers does square root of 41 lie in between? And that would be 6 and 7. All right, let's look at square root of 99. Square root of 99 falls in between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100. So that would be falling in between 9 and 10. So if I have 9 and I have 10, the square root of 99 is going to fall somewhere in between 9 and 10. If you were to evaluate it, it would be 9 point something. All right, three more. Square root of 5 is going to fall in between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. So it's going to fall in between 2 and 3. So if I have 2 and I have 3, the square root of 5 will fall in between. If you were to evaluate it, it would be two point something. All right, 27.45 falls in between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36, which is five and six. So on a number line between five and six lies the square root of 27.45. All right, the last one, square root of 66 falls in between 64 and 81, the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 81 is 9. So on a number line, 8 and 9, the square root of 66 falls in between 8 and 9, and if you were to evaluate it, it'd be 8 point something. Alright, so there's estimating roots between consecutive integers. Alright, so now, instead of um, estimating without a calculator, we're going to be using a calculator to just round decimals. 
So, if you take the cube root of 120 on your calculator, you'll get the decimal 4.9324, and it's going to go on and on forever. We are going to round to the nearest hundredth. So if you count tenth, hundredth, and then the decimal after tells you what to do. So the two tells you to keep this three the same. So 4.93 is the estimation of cube root of 120. All right, next one, cube root of 71. Let's write it out is 4.14081. Uh, let's round to the nearest hundredth again, so you count to the second place, circle the third. That third one, that zero, tells you to keep the four the same. So it is 4.14. All right, and the last one. The square root, so not cube root, but square root of 29, if you uh, calculate that on your calculator, you'll get 5.38516, second decimal place, circle the third. That 5 actually tells you now to round up to 5.39. So these are just uh, simple estimations of cube roots and square roots using a calculator and rounding. All right, the last part of this lesson, listing a combination of rational and irrational numbers, least to greatest. So we've been working on learning all different types of numbers, but now we're going to put them all together and we're going to place them on the number line and use the number line to help us list them least to greatest. So starting out, I want to rewrite these all as decimals. So, um, negative square root of 37 is negative 6.08 rounded. So that means I need to go to negative 6, but it's a little more negative than just negative 6, so to the left of negative 6 a little bit. I have a dot, and that dot is negative square root of 37. All right, let's do the cube root of 27. That's actually a perfect cube. The cube root of 27 is 3. So that's just a positive 3. I can plot that right here with 3, but let's keep it labeled its original form, cube root of 27. Cross them off as I go. 3 fourths, that's a decimal that I want you to have memorized, um, is 0.75. So 0 0.75 is positive, it's in between 0 and 1. So that is three-fourths. All right, negative 2.2 repeating is already in decimal form, so I just need to go to negative 2, but if there's a decimal after and it's negative, it has to be on the left of that, so negative uh, 2.2, I'm using a white marker here, but that's okay. Negative 2.2 All right, next one, pi, one of the most famous irrational numbers. So the decimal for pi, we should all know, is about 3.14. So 3 is going to be close to the cube root of 27, but it's got to be a little bit to the right, pi. All right, 5 and 1 fifth. 5 and 1 fifth is the decimal 5.2, so a little to the right of 5. And then last one, negative square root of 81. 81 is a perfect square. Square root is 9, but if it's negative, plot that here. So now I'm listing all of these numbers in their original form. I need to put 5 and 1 fifth. Listing them least to greatest. 
So, oh, I didn't put this one in its original form. Negative 9 was actually negative square root of 81. And then the next smallest is negative square root of 37. Uh, the next smallest was negative 2.222. And then 3 fourths cube root of 27 pi and 5 and 1 fifth. So lots of different types of numbers written in different ways, but still understanding them enough to plot them on a number line and list them least to greatest. There's your lesson. Good luck.